Guys, so I'm going to break down last week in review for you. Uh, we have a lot of topics to cover. Um, we're going to start off by the attempted coup attempt that Nancy Pelosi was behind ultimately. And I'm going to break that down for you real quick. What a lot of people haven't really realized is there was a gentleman that was arrested the day that Nancy Pelosi, the day before Nancy Pelosi was supposed to be leaving the country with her and 83 family members of her supposedly new cabinet that she would have had after President Trump and Mike Pence were assassinated. So this gentleman was arrested after coordinating with undercover FBI agents to acquire the most advanced rocket launched anti-tank grenade that we have ever produced and on top of that he was going to use a bomb to uh, target a few other targets as well now a lot of people aren't putting together that this happened the day before Nancy Pelosi decides to leave Washington DC and it just so happens that he was supposed to launch the attack on that day now if you look at the three places that she was going to that's also very 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 suspicious considering the deep state has very very deep ties in Egypt that have been pulling the strings with what's going on in Libya, Syria, the Middle East, etc., etc. Then on top of that, she was going to head over to Afghanistan, where there's a lot of deep state players as well. And then she was going to head over to Brussels to sure everything up and make sure that she knew exactly how the European Union was going to handle everything and more or less show where her true allegiance is lied. Now, you also have to look at what's going on with, you know... And the way that Davos is going on this year. Now, Macron, Angela Merkel, as well as the President of the United States aren't going to Davos this year. And this just so, so happens to correlate exactly with what was going on with Nancy Pelosi. Now, Donald Trump supposedly knew that this was going to happen all the way back in November and they plotted against it. And that makes a lot of sense as well. So, ultimately, we have to think that Nancy Pelosi was behind one of the biggest coup attempts to ever happen, and there's a fictional story going around right now on Twitter that is more or less describing the event of what if, and that's basically describing that Steele was coordinating with Nancy Pelosi as well as the British government for... A submarine that was off the east coast of the United States to use a missile on the White House as well and I highly suggest everybody go look at that all you have to do is type into YouTube what if just informed talk and watch that guy's video he does a very good job breaking all of that down for you guys now all of that set aside this also plays into what's going on with Ruth Bader Ginsburg a very 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 much so if you look at what happened with Fox News Fox News put out an alert on their chirons saying that Nancy Pelosi was dead with a graphic giving the date of her birth and the date of her death as of 2019. Now this creates a very interesting dilemma for the mainstream media. Basically, it makes it so that they have to give us proof of life. Now, there's a lot of rumors that Ruth Bader Ginsburg is already dead and what happens? Well, they leave it up to the New York Times, the New York Slime, all these bastards out there to give us proof of life. So what do they do? The very next day, they supposedly talk to Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the phone, talking about her um, congratulations for a nomination, etc., etc., etc. But what's very interesting about that phone call is you don't hear Ruth Bader Ginsburg's voice at all. You have to take it on the faith of the New York Times that they actually talk to her. So... I'm going to venture to guess that Ruth Bader Ginsburg is dead and gone, especially considering what's going on with this whole Covington school and this Catholic church and the Catholic diocese being tied up in all this bullshit that just happened in Washington, D.C. Now, apparently there was a Native American person that was at the Lincoln Memorial sitting there who supposedly got accosted by these children from a Catholic school that were supposedly hurling racial slurs at the man and being MAGA-wearing racists. So, if you look at all of the video that actually went down with all of this, it shows the complete opposite. In fact, this guy gets right in this child's face with a drum pounding on it, calling him a racist, screaming at him. And this kid does nothing but smirk at him and replies to his rudeness with happiness and gleefulness. And it triggered him exactly how it would trigger most people. Now, what happens here is this gets national news attention, obviously, 
but what most people don't realize is this guy that's claiming to be a Vietnam vet never actually served in Vietnam. Not only that, he was, you know, never, never got any kind of paperwork proving that he was in Vietnam. Actually, he served after it was possible for him to be a Vietnam vet. And not only that, it turns out that he lied about all kinds of things. So the guy isn't who he says he is at all. Now, if you look into his background even more, he's been part of several music videos, and he has ties to a bunch of producers and all kinds of other shit like this. It's just absolutely mind-blowing what's going on. Now, the reason this ties directly into Ruth Bader Ginsburg is because it's very, very obvious. If you look at the nominations who Trump has put up before as females, there's a woman named Amy, and she's a devout Catholic, and she would make a perfect, a perfect Supreme Court justice. So what are they doing? They're getting out in front of it by categorizing all Christians, which aren't the same as Catholics, but to them they are. So they're grouping all of this together and saying that, you know, if you're white and you're Christian, well, fuck it. If you're Christian at all and you're wearing a MAGA hat, you're a fucking racist. And that's what they're doing, is they're getting out ahead of any conservative nominee. Because as, if Trump appoints a woman, you can't use sexism, you can't use rape, you can't use all this other shit that they've been using against these white males that he's appointed. So what are they going to do? They're going to target her religion. They're going to target her faith. They're going to target the fact that you belong to this community who's a demonstrated racist. Now, this is backfiring on them completely because the evidence is out there for everybody to see that these kids are not... The, the main cause of this and we have a lawyer that's going out there who's doing very very good at defending these children he's going to end up suing a bunch of people for defamation he went out on national tv and said anybody that's threatened these kids that said that these kids are racist you have 24 hours sorry 48 hours to come out and retract their statement and make a and make an apology and this is going to open a huge can of worms and this is going to this is going to take the focus completely away from the narrative that the mainstream media wanted to push. Now, you still have the border wall, okay? Now, the border wall, like I said, has very little to do with the actual wall itself. That wall is getting built one way or another. Trump needed this to last more than 30 days so he can uh, he can use the rifts. And basically what the rift allows him to do is take all of these non-essential employees and restructure them inside our government. Now, he's only allowed to do this if, if he had a plan to do so, because you have to have a devised plan in order to institute a rift. And what everybody in the mainstream media is neglecting to tell you is the fact that this plan has already been developed. And not only has it been developed, it's been developed by the guy that is now Trump's chief of staff. So before Trump appointed this new guy as the chief of staff, he had him out for the past two years working on a plan to reorganize the government and consolidate all kinds of sources in order to make our bureaucracy to work a whole lot better. Now, the only way to fire these government employees is if they go without work for over 30 days or 22 business days. So the reason you haven't seen Trump bend or do anything to make this actually progress forward as far as no negotiations and everything is involved is because he's depending on this government shutdown to allow him to reorganize our government and destroy a lot of these non-essential personnel people. And on top of that, it's going to lead to a restructuring of the IRS 100%. Now, I don't think that there's any coincidence that this shutdown is happening during tax season either. I think we're going to see an economic reset sooner rather than later. And if you look at the moves everybody's making, especially Russia, with the way that they're liquidating their U.S. bonds, something is happening behind the scenes. Something is happening behind the scenes. Because you have Trump meeting with China at the end of this month. You have Russia liquidating all kinds of their assets. You have North Korea meeting with Trump and, well, he didn't, they didn't meet with Trump yet, but they met with China, which has been a precursor to them meeting with the United States beforehand at all. And North Korea is going to play a bigger part in this economic restructure than most people think, especially considering the fact that they have a lot of rare earth minerals there. I'm just saying there's a lot going on behind the scenes. So thank you for joining me. This has been my weekly update. I'm going to try to get back on more frequently. i going out today to fix the device that holds my camera so I can do this a lot easier and not have to wait till I'm done doing my work. Thank you guys for joining me. It was nice to talk to you again. God bless you and your family. Have a nice day.